Hello um, everyone and thank you for joining me on my channel here on YouTube where I do GCSE revisions. This um, is a really short video. I just want to explain to you seven things that I've noticed young people do when they write their GCSE exams that hamper their success. By just following what I'm going to explain to you right now, you can actually increase your GCSE marks overall in science by a good 20 marks. And I mean that, 20 solid marks. You can literally raise your GCSE grade in science up to two levels. I mean that. You can raise it by two levels by just following, you know, what I'm going to talk to you about right now. So I've just called it the seven things that young people do that you should avoid or do differently in order to gain more marks on your GCSE paper. By the way, I teach science and maths and um, I do it to GCSE levels and I do biology to A levels. So I'm just going to give you these tips. Number one, read instructions. One thing I find is that many young people do not read instructions. It's very important that you read the instruction on the front of your booklet. When you're giving your booklet, you're required to write your names, your exam numbers, the center and all of those. That is your opportunity to read the instructions. Let's put it in perspective. Some young people, when they write the maths exam, even though they have the calculator, uh, right by their, their side and it's a paper that says calculator allowed because they are under a lot of stress they just forget so they come out of the exam saying oh i did not know i needed to use the calculator i couldn't solve these questions and when they meet with a question they cannot calculate without a calculator they just leave it they get frustrated and they lose marks where they're supposed to actually gain marks so it's very very important that you start by reading the instructions it kind of gives you a calming effect and make you uh, gently walk you into the exam mode so read the instructions number two six mark question i am very strong on this Lots of young people don't even bother to read the six mark question. They avoid it like a plague. They just leave it blank. And by the way, if you're taking the EDSL exam board this year, for example, and you're taking your GCSE exam with the EDSL, you have two biology papers, B1 and B2. On B1, you have two of these six mark uh, questions and two on the B2. That is a total of 24 marks. 24 marks that you just have, you just lose if you don't even bother to read it. Sometimes they feel, oh, I can't do it. I can't word it correctly. You can. I always say to students, you can if you just try. Just read the question. Read it and make up your mind you're going to attempt it and you will do it. I actually have a video on how to get six out of six on every six mark question in physics, chemistry and biology. Trust me, lots of young people that I work with, they've been using these methods to get six mark question out of every six mark question they attempt and you too can do the same. Thirdly, calculator. The calculator is allowed on the science paper in GCSEs in England, so make sure you use the calculator. I know the math is really easy. Honestly, I have another video where I've talked about the maths that you need to do when you do your science paper. They're really simple maths uh, topics and um, applications, but you need to use the calculator. If you don't use the calculator, you might struggle. And so you can save time as well. You want to be a quick, as quick as you can when you do your exam. The fourth one is maths. I have written there maths and I have written simple. The reason I've done that is because it's really simple maths. Maths is easy. So let's get busy. You know, as some young people would say. Math is really is, is really easy. The math you have on the biology, physics, and chemistry paper is so easy. You don't want to miss any of those maths. By the way, on the biology paper, you have 10% of the questions in maths, and chemistry is um, 20% and uh, uh, physics is 30% of the questions in science have uh you know contain maths so you don't want to lose all of that you want to actually gain all of that because it's really easy and then the fifth one is data i have written here data data questions are so easy to answer 
a very simple example they could give you a, a, a graph they could draw a graph showing you how um for instance the number of a uh, a prey have increased, they've named the prey and in accordance with how the predator community ha uh, have also um, um, changed and they'll put years or something like that, they'll put numbers, very simple drawings like that, very simple data information or it could be a full uh, graph with um, bars and all of that, in whatever way they ask the data question, the answers are on the question. There are actually some questions where you're required to just conclude, complete the drawing, complete the diagram. They are so easy. All you need to do is read what you're required to do and do it. I also have another question, another little video where I explained how to work around these data questions in detail. You'll find them here on my channel. Then number six is plan. I'll just, apart from the six mark question, those of you that are going to write the English paper as well, or philosophy and ethics, you would know that there are some questions you write, you answer in, science, in, in English and philosophy that you're required to write for a very long, you know, like several pages. You want to plan that. You want to really plan that question before you start. So the, one of the key, keys to getting six out of every six mark question that I talked about in my video is you plan your response, you plan your answer. So for long response questions, you wanna plan it. You wanna list out all the things you're gonna write about and then you start writing. You will see that way you coordinate your points, you will sync them, you put them in a chronological order and you see you get more marks when you do proper planning. The last one, don't discuss after. Some students write a paper, say they write a B1, they come out, oh, they start panicking. Oh, did you see that question? I didn't know if I was to put a dog or oh, go to an animal. I'm like, forget it. You've done that paper, let it be. Now focus on the next one you have the next day or the day after, or maybe same day in the afternoon. Why waste your time and energy discussing the paper you've already done? It's counterproductive. In most cases, please do not discuss it because you were on that exam condition. You're not even sure whether what you're saying is what you actually wrote. That paper is gone. Leave it. Concentrate all your efforts and your energies on the paper that's ahead of you. I hope this has been very helpful. And if you want to leave, leave me a comment, leave me a question, and I'll walk my I'll walk around my uh, my schedule and make sure I give you a, an answer really, really quickly. I'll respond within 24 hours. Please, uh, we have we're on the countdown to the GCSE exam. Uh, please take enough rest. Carry on revising. Whatever you do, keep positive. Keep saying to yourself, I must pass. I can do this. And I am with you all the way. I'm praying for you. I'm believing God that he would strengthen you and enable you to do well. God bless you. Thanks.